Hi, and welcome back to Gay Chill Crafts. I'm Rick. And I'm Sarah. And uh, we're back after <laughs> quite a long break, um, which was start off as unintentional and then sort of became more intentional. I will get into that later. Um, but before we get into where we've been and what we've been up to, which is basically what we're going to talk about in this video, we do have some sad news to share. Um, unfortunately, both of our llamas passed away in the last few weeks, and there's not really much to say about that. It's just sad. Um, they were both towards the probably end of their natural lifespan, um, and we're bummed about it, but I guess... Um, I don't know. It's just it's the way things are when you have a farm when you keep animals, you know, these things happen. So But we just wanted to share that and let you know and maybe raise a toast. What do you think? Always. To Guinness and Cusco. Guinness Thank you for Cusco. all the year many years being good guards on our farm. We appreciate you. So Um What has been going on? <laughs> There's been, there's been not much new happening here. Um, you know, like all of you, we've been uh, following the guidelines and staying at home and um, we live, you know, a fairly rural isolated life anyway and, and are very privileged to have a nice farm with hiking trails and access to all the things we need. Um, so we've been, you know, we've been doing all right during this very weird period. Um, and I've really been enjoying keeping up with what everybody else has been doing too. <laughs> a lot of people are sharing maybe more than they would normally or, or you know, extra stuff. And that's just been really nice to um, enjoy your content that you've been putting out there. Right. And whether you're making content or not, I was just going to mm -hmm. say this is, um, you know, if you're going to make lemonade out of the lemons is you're going to get a chance to learn. Um, uh, and how some people are learning to become makers. Some people are learning mm -hmm. how to... Uh, you know, explore their local communities as far as sources, both for food, uh, drink, as well as uh, being their creativity and mm -hmm. learning maybe what sparks their creativity. Sometimes Absolutely. that's be forced. Yep, and also um, kind of new new crafts and new challenges. Even if it's not something that's going to turn into a permanent hobby, just trying new projects. Um, and I myself have been have been doing that a little bit, and I'll tell you more about that in a bit. So. So that's been interesting, but um, in terms of group projects <laughs> that Rick and I have both been working on, um, Rick's been brewing even more. Um, we finally got, or he finally got the basement all organized and cleaned out. And uh, you have a nice little setup down there. It's really cozy and comfortable. Thanks. Yeah, we were tripping over things and now we have a lot of space, mm -hmm. both for the brewery um, but also, you know, took inventory of our freezer and went through things. And every once in a while, we just try to call and make sure we're not just accumulating things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, this is not a beer video, but uh, per se, but um, this was one of Rick's latest beers. It's an IPA. Um, as you all know, if you've been here for a while, you know we like IPAs. Want to tell us a little bit about this? Fresh my memory. It's been a couple minutes. It's good. <laughs> I'll say that. No, it is good. It is good. Um, it is. I forget if it has it. Oh no, it's called Melancholy Berry. Sorry, mm -hmm. I just kind of blanked. So anyway, it, it is based on one of our other recipes, which was the um, metaphors and rainbows. Whatever is kind of the base, mm -hmm. where we use some citra and some other types of hops. And I wanted to try to explore again the use of some of the German hops, like Huel Melon and uh, Mandarin and Bavaria, uh, both of which are kind of fruity, etc. Mm -hmm. So I just wanted to try those, and we've been exploring those ever since our uh, trip to uh, Lone No, what's it called? Earth Eagle. Earth Eagle Brewing. Earth Eagle Brewing. My apologies. Mm -hmm. um, and so I'm just exploring that again. So this one has a lot of those kind of tangerine and orange and those types of flavors to it. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. It's very good. Um, it's aging well. It's on our keg system, which is nice to have. And, uh, Which is another thing we took advantage of during yes. this time is completely cleaned and repaired, uh, repaired all of the tubing, etc. So mm -hmm. everything was ready for new, fresh uh, beers. Yes. And uh, you just finished brewing today um, another IPA. Correct. With another hot profile. Kind of that same base recipe? 
Similarly, uh, mm -hmm. they were kind of combining the metaphors, rainbows, and whatever, along with the strawberry milkshake IPA, mm -hmm. uh, strawberry milkshake, melon milkshake, whatever we refer to it. Maybe we'll <laughs> make a link down below. Mm -hmm. um, and so it was kind of a combination of those two. I had asked you what you wanted. You had said for the summer you would like a um, milkshake beer, mm -hmm. uh, which is essentially in this case is just meaning adding some lactose to give it like a nice mouthy flavor. Uh, and I didn't add any vanilla or any of those types of things, but mm -hmm. I'm just using some galaxy and mosaic and lots and lots of citra, uh, to brew this up and have something big for the, uh, the time being to have on tap. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, we're lucky that we can still get a lot of our great local Vermont beers at our local market, which, um, is still offering groceries on a weekly basis. Um, but it's also really nice to be able to brew your own, yeah. save some money and, you know, have have steady beer supplies right. um, while you're in quarantine. That said, please do support <laughs> your local breweries. Find out what they're doing. Many of you are going to be doing kind of curbside pickup, et cetera, mm -hmm. and takeaway. Mm -hmm. um, and so please, if you can, support them. I, knew that, I know that both Brockle Bank and Upper Pass, uh, via their first branch tasting spot, are doing curbside and takeaway pickup. So support them as best you can. They're going to be having a tough time of it as well. Yeah, exactly. Oh. Um, so other than, uh, brewing, um, which has been fun, um, we didn't go to Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival this year, and that's not because they had to cancel it. Um, we had decided that beforehand. Um, so it was the first time in a long time that we've actually been able to kind of get garden prep done in the window that you're supposed to be getting gar your garden ready to, for planting. We usually feel kind of behind the curve. We come back from Maryland, we're tired, we miss another week of prep, and then before you know it, it's June 1st, and we're like, why haven't we planted any plants? Yeah, so, last year we had a setback because I had sciatica after our tri long oh, trip long trip back from Maryland. Oh, and I had that Maryland. horrible cold for a month. Sick. Yeah. I was down yeah. to the count. So we got a little bit behind, and we mm -hmm. took advantage of it. We built uh, four new beds. Mm -hmm. We spruced up the ones we have. We uh, created... We repaired them. They were falling apart. Yeah. <laughs> nice. uh, we built a new compost bin out of some mm -hmm. old pallets and chicken wire. Um, we've just uh, we've just done a lot of work around here getting ready to you know, plant our victory gardens mm -hmm. uh, a little bit more than we used to. Last year we mostly did... Um, Kind of a uh, dying plants, flowers, yeah. and this all, year, go ahead. I'm all sorry. flowers last year because of that late start, and I wasn't sure. I didn't want to waste money on a bunch of seedlings that were never going to bear fruit, um, or that were going to die off in the fall frost before they could set fruit. So, mm -hmm. I just decided to do the the dye garden, which is fun, and I'll be doing some more of that this summer um, with the natural dyes. I'll be sharing more about that with you guys. But um, in the meantime, I'm glad to have my vegetable and my herbs back. Um, it's really cool. So. It's exciting. It's mm -hmm. nice to be able to have some of the time to dig a, dedicate. Yeah, I'm, I'm staring off out at the, the, the garden there. Yeah. Um, and it's nice to be able to appreciate it and nice to be able to kind of uh, spend some of the time it's needed that's mm -hmm. been neglected over the last two years. Yep. Yep. I'll say that's the benefit. Uh, I hope you don't mind me sharing. Rick got laid off work mid-March and... Um, so, but it's been, you know, clean basement, cleaned out the freezer, brewing more beer, doing the garden stuff. So yeah, the library so upstairs, the, the guest room upstairs. That's are, right, the uh, library's all tidied up. It'd be great when people can visit. <laughs> we'll have lots of nice, yeah. uh, clean places to share. Yeah. In the meantime, we've hauled out the old PS3. We've been playing some nostalgia <laughs> games, which has uh, been fun. So, yeah, well, it's been fun that that's kind of therapeutic to just get yes. your game on, especially if you can find things to kind of blow up if that's how <laughs> your anxiety is uh, <laughs> can reduced. Can stress out? That's definitely what I've been doing. It's just like, just kill zombies. Kill them. Kill them all. Um, yeah. So <laughs> anyway, that's been fun. Um, but yeah, looking looking forward to spending more time in the yard this summer, spending more time in the garden. Um and I've been baking more. I think a lot of, you know, a lot of us have gotten back on like the homemade goodie treat train. Um, and I've certainly been doing that. I haven't, I don't have any like new groundbreaking recipes to share or anything, but just some, some old standards. Um, I will say that the Ina Garden uh, lemon cake recipe is very good. Um, but it's kind of a pain in the butt because it makes two loaves. And if you only want one loaf. It's like, what's half of two thirds? I know I can, or three quarters of a cup or something. This, the measurements aren't great for trying to split it in half. Um, but if you want to make two lemon cakes, maybe drop one off at a neighbor's house or something. 
or freeze it. You could freeze it and defrost it. Yeah. Yeah. If you're That's baking for one. friends or mm -hmm. family, or maybe you have a local uh, elderly or maybe people who are compromised systems or something like that, it's mm -hmm. nice to be able to drop something off on their porch safely for them. So. Yeah. But yeah. it's also your your baking today. Sarah's currently mm -hmm. making some cinnamon rolls, uh, so she can share with her mother. You can see. Mm -hmm. Nancy's not. Hi, mom. Hi, mom. <laughs> I can't do this. Wow, there. there. there <laughs> Wrong yeah. direction. That way. Um, yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, Sarah's baking for her with uh, Mother's Day, at least in North America, United States. Mm -hmm. uh, tomorrow, um, she's baking for her. Yep. So it'll be today when this video comes out. Oh, true. Tomorrow, today, whatever. Happy news. Um, yeah. And, and going forward in terms of videos, I'll just share uh, briefly. Um, one of the things I've kind of been reassessing for a few months is kind of the future of Gage Hill Crafts and what, you know, I think last year was a time when I was really assessing, like, could this be a full-time job? Could this be something that is, you know, supplements our income? Um, and I've kind of come to the conclusion that I like my hobbies to be hobbies. Um, and that doesn't mean I'll never sell yarn again or, would, you know, we'll never have anything available. But um, with COVID-19 kind of shutting down a lot of festivals and fairs and things that we would be going to anyway it just seems like a good time to kind of reassess that and turn back to more hobby hobby level interest rather than trying to make this like a professional um thing so and along those lines too not putting the pressure on ourselves to do a weekly video because it is time consuming um it's fun but it's time consuming and sometimes it's a stretch to come up with content if you haven't been able to to do a lot of crafting. And so um, I think at least once a month, hopefully more frequently than that, but a bare minimum once a month, we'll, we'll be back um, on that regular basis to share with you what we've yeah. been up to. We, we enjoy doing these things. It's just, an, you know, we don't want to sit there and just like laundry list things off to you. We right. And share when there's time, when things are need to be shared. Right. When there's actual inspiration and stuff going on. So, um, because I haven't actually been able to knit since about January. So, um, you know, I haven't, I just haven't been doing as many crafts. And that's the other reason that I kind of pulled back. It's like, well, I don't really have anything to share this week because I haven't been doing a lot. So, um, yeah. Anything else you wanted to discuss about our, our joint efforts? <laughs> no, just uh, want to wish everybody well and mm -hmm. uh, encourage everybody to the best they can to stay in touch and, um, uh, Make sure to, but both with us, but with your friends and family and loved mm -hmm. ones, and take care of yourselves. And please follow all the guidelines you can. Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. um, they're there for everybody's safety. So, well, with that, um, I'm going to let Rick get back to his. Uh, he's got a couple more things to finish up down in the brewery. Mm -hmm. So, let you get back to that, and I will share a few of the projects that I kind of started before um, quarantine happened and, and all of that. Um, so. Just hang out for a second, and I'll, I'll share this with you. Thanks for All joining right. me. Thanks, honey. It's always a mm -hmm. pleasure, and hopefully I'll see everybody soon. Again, until then, take care. It's not funny when he does that. I don't know. Anyway, okay. So as I mentioned before, um, I haven't been able to knit for any appreciable length of time um, since about January, and that's been a repetitive stress issue. Um, I, I am aware of what's going on, so I don't need medical advice, um, but uh, I'm not really going to be able to get it fully addressed until I'm able to go back in and get some physical therapy and massage. So in the meantime, what I've been doing is not knitting so that I can work. Um, if you've been around on the channel for a while, you know that um, my day job is very labor intensive, physical labor intensive. And so in order to keep working, um, I have to kind of limit my other activities. And that's included, unfortunately, um, knitting and spinning. Um, back in January, um, the lovely ladies of the best day ever, um, crafting podcast, um, Trisha and Arthella hosted a knit, a knit along, um, for the, um, the Felix sweater. Um, either you could do either the pullover or the cardigan version. Um, and if you've been here for a little while, you know that I've already made one Felix sweater, but I did start another one for that knit along. And this is how far I got. I, I did get the whole body finished. Um, and I just had the sleeves to go. So I'm hoping that, you know, with some care, with some care and attention to my physical uh, constraints, 
that um, I will be able to continue working on this um, in fits and starts and finish it up, you know, before the end of the summer and the cold weather starts back in. Um, this is Green Mountain Spinnery um, yarn and what is it called? I can't remember. I'm so sorry. Um, it's their it's their sort of thicker one with a lot of mohair in it. I think it's called Mountain Mohair. That's what it is. Um, and I, I like this yarn. It's gonna this is gonna bloom and kind of fill in all these gaps on these uh, loose stitches, um, and just re look really lovely uh, when it's all finished. Um, so and I participated in the cal um, and actually got a prize um, for participating. So thank you again to um, Trisha and Arthella. I will link their podcast below this video so you can get to it really easily. Um, if you need kind of community knitting therapy. Like you just wanna you just wanna sit and listen to two people get excited about their crafting um, and share what they've been working on. I highly recommend um, subscribing to their channel um, because it's just it's so calming and yet uplifting. Um, it's just it's you know it's full of kindness and creativity and inspiration. Um, and I really appreciate them. Um, so the prize that I won uh, had two components to it. The first was this skein um, from a group called the Fiber Seed. She's an independent dyer. And um, this is her her sock yarn. This color is called Glacier. And it's, as you can see, it's mostly an undyed base, but then it has these speckles of bright blue and then a sort of a dusty purple color. Um, and it's just lovely. I was telling Trisha, when I thanked her for for sending me the prize, um, that you know blue is my favorite color, and and so this is really great um, to have, and I look forward to knitting this when I can knit more. Um, and then the other component was this great tote bag from Fiberspace, which is a local yarn shop in Alexandria. It's near where the ladies of the um, Best Day Ever Knitting podcast live, um, and this is a great shop. It's a um, it's been around for quite a while. I have another friend um, in the DC area who, this is her local yarn shop. And, you know, it's big, they have a wide selection, they've got price points for everybody. Um, and in, in the normal times, um, they have a lot of workshops and classes and drop-ins for, you know, like community chat or help with a project. Um, so, you know, check them out. I think, I'm pretty sure that they could send you yarn in the mail. Um, or do a local pickup if you are are in the DC area. Um, and if you're not in the DC area, or if you have another local yarn shop, um, as Rick was saying, you know, please support all the, the local businesses that you can. They really need us um, in these difficult times. So please support as much as possible. Um, but thank you again, Trisha and Arthella, for my great gifts. I will definitely be using both of these, um, and I'll let you know what I make out of them. So, or out of the yarn, I guess, I'm the, for the bag. I, although I could naturally dye this, couldn't I? Um, that logo is dark enough. I think it would look really cool. So I might try that. Maybe some uh, tansy or weld over dye um, for a nice bright yellow bag. That'd be kind of cool. Um, I've seen other people dyeing their project bags. Marceline Smith of um, the Hey Brownberry podcast has been doing a lot of dyeing, natural dyeing onto fabric and dyeing... Um, like plain project bags with her natural dyes. So that's been really cool to watch. Um, the other thing that I have been, or that I did get a chance to do, um, and I did this uh, some even when I was kind of suffering and in pain with my, my arm, um, was to spin. And so this is a skein. It's a Polworth silk blend. And it's this amazing... Um, colorway that's called Whitewater Eddies, and I'll show you what the fiber looks like because I have more of it. <clears throat> so here it is in bump form, and you can see it's it's totally got my name on it because it's got all these like teals and blues, but then it has a little bit of this sort of rusty like swamp green, which you know, in a couple of my, my videos from last year, projects I was working on um, with some kind of random robings that I had uh, gotten from a friend, that that kind of, I guess they're called acid greens, um, even though they should be called base greens because they look more alkaline. Anyway, 
Um, but those kind of swampy greens really, in, in moderation and as kind of an accent color or a background color, they're really cool. So I'm looking forward again to, to spinning more of this up. My plan is to make a big shawl with all of this. I think with the, the silk content, it's just going to be lovely and warm and light and luxurious. Um, and this roving is dyed by Casey of Port Fiber. Um, there's her information. So Port Fiber is a fiber uh, shop up in Portland, Maine. Um, she does have some yarn, um, including Harrisville Nightshades um, and a few other yarns, but she's mostly, um, you know, felting, spinning, weaving, those kinds of fiber crafts. So if you're not a knitter, but you're into fiber, um, or if you are a knitter and into fiber, I highly recommend um, checking out her website. In the face of the COVID outbreak, um, Casey has expanded her online store so you can see pictures of all her colorways and all her um, bases. And, you know, she can help you pick out colors to color combinations. Um, and, you know, again, it's a small business and she really needs our support. So check that out. <laughs> Sorry, I was not feeling reclumped just then. It's just that I got, I got one of those weird tickles down in the bottom of my throat. And I felt like I was going to do a really loud cough, so I had to stop for a second. Um, but the other thing that, uh, or one of the other things that I've been doing, um, and I, I was fortunately able to start and complete this before the pandemic outbreak, um, was I decided, I got inspired at the very beginning of the year to take a pottery class. I found one at a local studio um, up in Randolph, Vermont, which is not far. It's about 15 minutes from our house. <clears throat> um, they're called Third Branch Pottery, in case you're a local. Um, and they mostly cater to small children, um, but they do have a classes for adults. And I signed up for their hand building class, um, which if you're not familiar with pottery, hand building is basically everything that's not throwing on a pottery wheel. So slab construction, coil construction, that kind of thing. Um, we actually ended up doing all slab work, uh, which was fine with me. Um, it's a quick and easy way to kind of get, um, get vessels together and then you can spend more time decorating them. And I, I, I made so much stuff in that class um, that I'm gonna do a separate video. I was gonna do it here, but I think this video will be two hours long if I try to show you all my pots. So um, I just wanted to mention it here and then let you know I'll, I'll do a, sh a separate video and show you the things that I made. But um, I also just kind of wanted to plug, again, you know, if you're feeling gloomy or uninspired in the hobbies and the things that you normally do, um, try something else you know, if you can. Um, you don't necessarily have to spend a lot of money to get started. You don't have to buy the biggest, heaviest piece of equipment or anything like that. Um, if it's something small like cross stitch or beading or, I don't know, making a new kind of cuisine or something, um, you know, you can buy the, the supplies or the ingredients for that and not spend a lot of money and just explore. And again, it doesn't have to be something that you're going to be full-time. Um, one of the things that the pottery class did for me, uh, and it was a six-week um, class that met once a week for three hours, but one of the things that class did for me was it confirmed that I actually don't want to do pottery as a, you know, a, a major hobby. Um, there were aspects that I liked and I was happy with everything I made, and I may still do it in the future, um, but I was kind of trying to see, you know, is this something I'm going to be wanting to do on a regular basis? And I got to say, it's not portable. It makes a huge mess. It takes forever to get your pots, you know, through the whole process because you have to do this and then let them dry and then bisque fire them and then wait for that to happen and then glaze them and blah. You know, there's all these steps. You don't get that instant gratification. You often don't know what things are going to look like. Um, and there's no going back. Unlike knitting or crochet where you can you know, rip out your project and start over if it's a, da a disaster or at least recycle the materials into something else. With pottery, you can't do any of that. So, you know, um, 
it's not going to be like a forever hobby for me, but I'm really glad that I got to do it because it's been something that I did in college years ago and I've been kind of curious about. And so I'm just, I'm glad I pushed myself and signed up for that class and got to complete the class. The class ended at the end of February. So it was right, you know, as people were starting to talk about shutting stuff down. Um, so I'm grateful that I got all my pots back and I will show you one. Um, this is a plate that I made. And I'm going to give this to my mother for Mother's Day, so um, that's why I wanted to show it today. And then I'll show you, again, all my other pots that I made um, in a separate video. But isn't that cool? Um, the technique we used for this, so we rolled out just a slab, so just a piece of dense clay. Um, and then we, onto the slab, we put a stain, um, which is this black. And then we cut out shapes and did designs. So this is like the moon and the stars and, um, you know, twinkly lights. I even like the way this, this clear overglaze, um, you know, kind of pooled and puddled in a few places. And it reminds me, if, you, if you're in an area where you can really see the stars, you can see the Milky Way. And you can see why it's called the Milky Way, because it's like this milky streak in the sky. Um, and so that's what this reminds me of, is being able to see, you know, a galaxy from far, far away. Um, so I was pleased with the way this came out. Now you may be wondering why I'm giving my mom a black plate, um, as a Mother's Day gift. You know, it's a little goth, but, um, trust me, I think she'll like it. Um, it, it fits into with some, some personal practice that she's been doing. So I, I'm hoping she'll be able to make good use out of this. Um, but yeah, so that's just a taste of my pottery. Um, we did a bunch of different forms, a bunch of different kinds of styles of things and different um, decorating techniques and all of that. So, you know, that was a lot of fun and I liked that it was a self-contained thing. So again, it's not like you're making a huge commitment. You're paying one flat fee for a, a set amount of classes. You get to make a certain number of things and then when you're done, you're done. And then if you wanted to sign up for another class later on, you know, maybe I'll do one next year. Maybe I won't. Maybe I'll do one in five years. I'll get the bug again and want to do it for a few weeks. Um, so anything like that. And there are a lot of, um, you know, pottery is one of those things where you really have to be in a studio and meeting with an instructor. And so that's not going to work um, so well in terms of distance learning. But there are plenty of hobbies and hands-on activities that you can do um, and, and take an online course um, to do them. So I do encourage you to, to explore those avenues that are uh, open to you and to, again, just maybe try something new. Uh, break yourself out of your your rut or your, you know, I think we're all kind of, I don't want to say depressed because I don't really feel depressed, but I think we're all kind of in this weird state of limbo of waiting for things to get back to normal. And it does have an effect. Yeah. But I guess what I'm trying to say is it's sort of stolen my creative mojo a little bit. It's put a damper on things to some degree, and so trying a new craft, you know, has been a great way to break me out of that. Um, one other thing that I've been doing, so since this, you know, um, this pandemic broke out, I haven't really been able to knit anyway, and so I haven't been able to use that as a creative outlet or a therapeutic way of, like, um, I don't know, coping, I guess. Knitting can be a coping mechanism. Um, in times of stress and I needed another another thing that I could dive into and that would take a lot of my mental energy and kind of channel it into something and um, so for me that has been tarot reading um, and I'm not going to go into a huge amount of detail here because I know that it's it's kind of a specialty thing um, but it's just been really great. It's, there's a long history of tarot. There's a lot of um, tradition around it. Um, there's some interesting history. The practice goes back at least 600 years, possibly more. Um, and so that's been just an interesting you know, research project, um, something to practice every day, something to build skill in and develop and get better at. Um, and there is an aspect of creative storytelling to it, so it's it's also kind of been my, my creative outlet as well. Um, and I think I'm going to start a separate like Instagram feed and possibly even a YouTube channel about tarot. 
Um, so I will put details around um, just to direct you over to those spaces once I've created them um, in case you are interested or you want to learn more because I know that um, that doesn't really fit under the heading of like what Gage Hillcrafts is and so I think it would be better to just give that its own space. Um, but in the meantime, if you have any questions about tarot, you know, getting started or anything, I do, I have found certain resources to be particularly helpful and I'd be happy to, you know, have a private conversation with you about that or, or even just give you links um, if you want to leave a comment below this video. So that's what we've been up to. Um, I hope you're all well. I hope that even if you're anxious or scared or depressed or bored, um, you know, or going through a hard time, that you are finding some moments of joy. You're certainly allowed to have those. And um, that you're able to connect with people, you know, whether it's a phone call or a note in the mail. Um, and that you are keeping, keeping yourself occupied, I guess, to the level that you want to be. Um, there's no, there's no prescription for this. It's not like, you know, we in our lifetime have gone through this kind of experience as a, as a planet before. So, um, there's no right way to do it, but I hope that you're taking care of yourself and those around you, those that you care about. And, um, you know, use this time, be gentle with yourself, but also use this time to allow yourself to explore um, subject matter or activities that you may not have had time for in the past um, and, and see what comes of it. Um, so yeah, that's all I really wanted to say and share with you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for coming back. Um, and we will be posting more regularly. It's been a couple of months um, since our last video. And so we will be posting at least monthly from now on um, and the, my video on my other pottery stuff will probably come out within a week of this one. So stay tuned for that. And, um, again, stay tuned for natural dyeing. I know that that, that has been, um, a topic that's been popular, um, here on our channel. And it's something that I love to do. I have saved up, um, a lot of the flowers that I grew last fall. I didn't have time to dye yarn with, but I still have all those. Um, and doing the natural dyeing is something that I can do even with my um, current physical limitations. Um, dyeing yarn doesn't aggravate any of that. So um, the fleece to fiber project or the, the, the sheep to sweater project um, that I had started last fall is still you know something I want to finish but that is definitely going to have to be backburnered until I'm feeling better. So um, but the natural dye stuff will be easy to do once the weather warms up. I'll be able to get back out at the dye kettles and share some more experiences and experiments with you um, that way. So again, in the meantime, be well, take care of each other, hang in there, and um, enjoy, you know, enjoy everything. Uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye.